I want to show you a form that's traditional karate, but I think it looks like Wing Chun. You tell me, because you're the expert, okay? Did you see any movements that looked like Wing Chun? There's actually a lot of similarity okay. when it comes to stance, movement, and hand positions. Interesting. Uh, so let's just, start with the stance. Okay. So we're gonna go open toe, and then heel, and you sink your hip. Right. You notice how the toes are slightly pointed inwards. That's the first way. So it's the same. Very similar. Cool. Way. The second way to open this is when you start with the feet together. Now we're gonna do open stance with a circular movement. Actually, that's the way I was taught in Okinawa oh. to do this circular motion as I step out. Interesting. But first there's a cross step. Mm -hmm. And some people use it as a sweep. We do, have, you, do you have this? We have a called pot gird, which means slapping foot, which looks like that. Also have dumb gird, which means stomp, stomping, which looks like that. It's the exact same. Oh really? Because I was taught <laughs> Some teachers in, uh -huh. in karate use it as a sweep. Others say, no, no, it's actually a stomp. Oh. And you just set both. Interesting. Whoa. That's so crazy. how would you use that against somebody? Well, we use it sometimes we move the body. If I can sweep the leg out, that's when we stomp. Oh, that's exactly what I did. Oh, really? <laughs> I cross step, I sweep and stomp. You wow. just did the exact same move against me. Oh, interesting. These are the first steps in the form. And the old master said this was the most important form mm -hmm. in karate. Wow. It's called Naihanshin Shodan or Teki Shodan in uh, the Shotokan style. Let's keep going. Okay, okay. I'm loving okay. this. Let's so, say you punch me this hand. Yeah. I, my position is here. Wait. No. So that's the first hand movement in the form. Oh, I did okay. not know that. That's crazy. Right. Yeah, and, this... and you're doing the first feet movements as yeah, well. So keep this. going. Yeah, yeah. So we call this Tang Sao. Right there. Now, nose how the foot. Now just sweep the leg right. and then pocket. And then you stomp, stomp my knee. around the knee like that. Whoa! So then the next moves were elbow strike, bam, bam. These blocks. Uh huh. Was there anything there you saw? We we have a called Quan Sao, which is a combination between a low bong sao and high tang sao, which looks like this. Ooh, so it's the same but open hand. Open hand. But usually we do this with the body turned like so. So you turn the body. We turn the body, just like Ooh. that. So defend high or low, and a lot of times this will follow the strike. Or a punch. So oh, but that is the like same that. punch. The exact same. Yeah. So we go one motion and you strike. Or oh, punch. so you can do it with open hands as well. Open hand or a strike. So how would you use that against me? Well, this is what we call the pin into unpin. Okay. If my hand gets pinned down like this, that you pin my hand. So I push your hand and you punch me uh, pu and I open. Oh. Now that's a strike. Oh. So I, I got an open space. Open creates space. Oh, that's first. where you turn. That's what I turn because okay. when you pin my hand like this. Yeah. I can't move. Bam, bam, bam. So this is the first step. Uh -huh. Now the second step is my hand to block the hand. And then I strike. Wow. So you can go like that. And this is such a huge difference between different Kung Fu styles, especially like Wing Chun mm -hmm. and Karate, that you use mostly open hands, it seems, mostly where we use hand. the closed fist. Well, Wing Chun people believe that if I close my fist, my muscle tend to be very stiff. Mm. If I open my hand, I can relax just on the structure itself, not to stiff my muscle. Right. Because when I teach some, especially beginners, if I teach them how to block with two hands like this, they tend to be overly stiff. You know what? A lot of karate people are very stiff. Maybe mm. this is why. Maybe. Maybe we should sometimes start opening the hands a bit more. Could be. And if yeah. you watch a lot of Wing Chun teachers demonstrating the technique, you if you're watching slow motion, you'll see how the the palm is always open, relaxed. Yes. That's why you see this, but they still have tension here. The tension is here. Yes. Not, not here. Not here. But right. So about the the back fist, is it more like an uppercut or does it come from the top? So if my hand is here, this yeah. is already aligned together. You should just punch straight forward. Straight in. Yeah. Mm. Unless if I turn my body this way, yeah. then I'll do like a back fist or a hammer fist or even a knife hand. So now you're using both hands. So in this form, we have one hand closed and the other comes from over oh, the top. Interesting. So it looks like I'm holding something or pushing something yes. as I uh, attack. Correct. How do you do it? We do it from this position. So oh. we're pulling the hand down to strike. We call lap sao. Pulling. Lap sao, interesting. Yeah. So it looks like this. You call this, is this like a pulling hand? It's like a pulling hand. But we're not committing. We're using this two, this three fingers. Yeah, Same. Sort of doing, oh. Exactly. We hook the hand yeah, and yeah, yeah. pull it back. Yes, we got it. So this, this pulling motion is mm -hmm. what we call hikite in Japanese. Mm. So many karate people think that they should punch from the hip. But actually hikite means we pull to the hip. Like retraction. 
exactly. Ah. Just like you did right now when you pulled my arm and attacked Correct. me. Yeah. Yeah. The exact same thing. And we always catch with these three fingers. Correct. Yeah. And if we don't pull it all the way to the hip, we just control it out here. The, the exact same Very way. Very similar. Because yeah. what a lot of people do is they'll pull the hand down this way. Uh -huh. Technically, you only pull into the center. Right. So when I pull it's here, but when my body turns, it looks like it's towards the side. Exactly. I'm not doing this. No, I'm just no. Doing this. So you're pulling using your body, Correct. not the arm not itself. Not the arm itself. Right. Yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. What, what else did you see? We had these double strikes, for instance, and the hook punch. So in Buji form, what we have is control, turn about, and we'll come back this that, way. That's the exact same thing, except we stop this hand by the, they say by the nipple, okay? By the nipple line. Exactly. And this goes further. But there are other older forms where they go equally the far. Yeah. Same thing with Chan. Depending on the lineage, some people will go halfway. They'll go here, but we'll see the honey hook go pull back this that's way. That's it. That's some the people will teach turn only this way and then come back this way. And that's exactly what I did. So mm -hmm. do you have an application for these moves? How you would use the them? The way I was taught is yeah. control the body to basically off balance the body. So that ah, we can punch like that. So you're pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling or control the neck and control the bicep. Well, How punch. would you control the neck? Right here. Oh. And just turn like that. And then this is, this is blowing my mind right now. I'm starting to feel like this form is a Wing Chun form that got hmm. maybe a little bit transformed or adapted for the Okinawan needs back in the days. What about power generation? They say we'll do a stationary punch. Yeah. It's not just this because there's no power. No. First, we teach is breathing and intention. Interesting. So let's say if I don't breathe, yeah. there's no power. Right. Breathing comes in multiple different ways. The way I teach breathing is a long, strong breathe. Ah. That's one. Notice how the power is different. But if, yes. Okay. Even without moving the body, you just like that. See the difference? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, second part is elbow expansion. So you're gonna extend the elbow as you punch. Now, drive the hip. Oh. That's it. Okay. Do you want to snap it? We don't snap. We don't, don't snap. We snap a very little bit at the end, but it's yeah. not going backwards. We call it a projection. Ah. So imagine this part of my hand is going through the target, but I don't want to pull back. Mm. When we make the contact, we're going through the line. Yeah, okay, yeah. I see. In karate, we're told that the hips are super important. Everything mm -hmm. starts from the hip. How do you use the hips in Wing Chun? So that's rotation and projection. Okay. Rotation means if I, let's say, if I'm facing this way, Yeah. The punch comes this way. Yeah. I rotate my body. Ah, way. so we call this tension in karate. Tension. When you don't have time to move your feet, you have to twist your upper body. Yes, instead. yes, yes. Yeah. Correct. Because Wing Chun is learning to tr learn how to fight in a very compact space. Right. So let's say if we're in the against a wall, when in like a elevator yeah. or a closet, even. But that's self defense. Yeah. Usually it happens up close when you Correct. don't expect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why Wing Chun don't teach you how to back up. Because ah. we can't back out and fight in self-defense. Most of self-defense happens here. Right. So we have to learn how to create space by rotating the hip. Wow. So in traditional karate, we also use the forearms to hit. Do mm -hmm. you ev ever hit with the forearms? We do, but it's called closing hand. Okay. So we call it tapsa, which is like when you punch me. Okay. Uh, sorry, we can punch this hand because now I hold yeah, it. Yeah, you're holding hand. that, so I need to punch yeah. with this. And we cut the hand, hand like, like this. Oh, you cut down we like cut. that. But the, the funny part is a lot of people chop it. We don't uh. chop. We close the line with the elbow. So imagine my hand brings here to here like that. Oh. So my elbow in, now I can tap. But if I chop it, yeah. I'm going down. And this is so common in traditional karate to chop the neck as well. We mm -hmm. call it the sword hand or shuto. Shuto. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In modern karate, it's been turned into something you do with the hand. Mm -hmm. But originally, it was the whole arm because this is the sword, right? Ah. This, is, this would just be the tip of the sword. That's interesting. But you want to use the whole thing like this. Yeah. It feels good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it have, feels good. It feels good. <laughs> it feels like. But then we have... usually control the other arm this way. And that's why we have both arms open, oh. like you do open hands in Wing Chun. Very similar. Mm. Yeah, I think the only exception is we move yeah. the hand from inside to outside. So we attack this way. Ah, okay. But you're going like this. Yeah, you can be on the outside or the inside. Yeah. yeah. There's also this, what we call stacking the hands by the hip. Mm -hmm. And what I saw you doing before was with open hands. Correct. We have an elbow position with a strike. So when I turn my body, we go like that. Right. Like this, elbow strike. And this hand is almost like retracting to the side of my body. As I turn, now okay. I have elbows to the center. So I was taught that this is just a preparation for the next move, but you're actually using it as some kind of an elbow strike? Yeah. 
So how if, would that work? If my all hands are connected, that's the same thing. Oh. And of course, I'm not reaching for it. It's here, and then elbow. So again. you're pulling me back and elbow striking me. Correct. Pulling and and this is so funny because everybody in karate are focused on the hands over here, mm -hmm. but it's about the elbow over there. Correct. Yeah. And we, in a dummy form, in the first couple movement, what we have is grabbing the neck. You can punch or you can elbow like that. Right. But it's similar to the motion. In the dummy form, it looks like one, two, three. But oh. in application, what we do here, that's Bam. an elbow. Oh. You'll see many, many, many Wing Chun practitioners when they, when they grab onto a neck, that's the first thing we'll do. I've practiced this form so many years with many grandmasters in Okinawa, mm -hmm. the birthplace of karate. But they never showed me these applications. And mm -hmm. maybe it's because the styles somehow along the way took different paths. Correct. Even though they might have the same origins somewhere in China. Mm -hmm. Who knows? So it's like if I just open the hands in all my kata, uh -huh. suddenly I'm doing Wing Chun, it feels like. I feel like that could be true. <laughs> That's true. Maybe I should try that when I get back home. You should try and compare the difference. One closed hand and one open hand. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe it also helped me be more relaxed, like exactly. you said. Because yeah. Wing Chun focuses on the position and the structure. Mm. The tension is coming from your intensity, how, how you breathe, and how you control your muscle. So when you say intensity, what exactly do you mean? So, uh, some kind of a mindset? It is. Part mm. of mindset, part of uh, body, body mechanics. So let's say I put my hand like this. Okay. okay. This is how we do our second form, okay. which is this right here. Ah, okay. Now, yeah. if I do it this way, there's no, there's no tension. Mm. It looks weak but mm. the, the body doesn't present. Mm. But now if I breathe and sink my ribs, this is important, I sink my ribs down. It compress your it center. Compress, yes, ah. now uh -huh. the power comes more natural. Oh. Intention is like, where do you hit, where do you strike, where do you project your power? Ah. I have to focus, but I also have to concentrate. Interesting. Yeah, because some people only focus. Uh -huh. I focus on one thing, but they don't concentrate on position. Interesting. So lose it, so you have to have both. Wow, mm -hmm. I've never heard that before. I learned that from my teacher. He's always telling me you gotta not just have focus, but you also have to have concentration. Sounds like a wise man. Everybody may teach different. Even yeah. though they all came from the same teacher, like my instructor teaches slightly different than his Kung Fu brothers. Yeah. Even within the same teacher, they might all develop differently based mm. on their understanding of mechanic mm. or the body physics. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see sometimes say, some people will teach Wing Chun Punch this way. Some people might t tell you you, you got to angle a little bit more. And, you know, vice versa, I think the principle is very close. Yes. Yeah. They're just variations on the same theme. Correct. So exactly. body mechanics is body mechanics. Yeah. Movement can be different, but the principle and the mechanics are always the same. Otherwise, they wouldn't be principles. Exactly. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank and you. I hope all of you enjoyed that.